Good morning, and good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, so, hello everyone, and welcome to today's live demo and of the Spectrum Image Cytometer. Uh, my name is Scott, and I'll be your moderator today. Uh, I work with our speaker, uh, Dr. Richie's, here at Nexlon Bioscience, where we have a team of experts in the science of cell counting and cell-based assays. I'm excited to be hosting today's session. I'm pleased to introduce our accomplished speaker, Dr. Suzanne Richies. She is a field application scientist here at Nexlon Bioscience and is one of our most popular speakers. Dr. Richies first delved into the cancer research world after accepting a job at AstraZeneca, following her bachelor's degree in biological sciences. She continued with this line of research further and graduated with a PhD in cancer cell biology from the University of Manchester. A four-year postdoctorate position in assay development led her to Nexlon Bioscience, where she has been working as an applications scientist using her expertise in virology, vaccine development applications, as well as high-throughput oncology assays and accurate cell counting. Before I hand the mic over to Dr. Richies, I have a few housekeeping items to cover about this presentation. First, today's demo is being recorded and you will receive an email within a couple of days with a link to access the recording that you'll be able to share with your colleagues who are not able to attend this session. Next, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you have a question for our speaker, please feel free to send it through the chat box. We'll be answering questions at the end of the session. If we don't get to your questions during today's demo, we will be sure to follow up afterwards. So, Without any further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming our speaker, Dr. Suzanne Richies. Thanks very much, Scott. Hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, and good afternoon, evening or good morning to everybody who's um, attending the live demo today. I've got the spectrum here. Hopefully you can see my webcam as well. I'll go through a short presentation first and then we'll get straight on with the live demonstration. So I first wanted to mention a little bit of information about Nexalon. We were founded in 2003 in Boston, Massachusetts in the USA. Um, our headquarters is in this really nice looking um, converted red brick mill building here. That's where all our development um, and manufacturing goes on. We are completely focused on automated cell counting and image cytometry and analysis. We're a group of scientists helping other scientists to increase their accuracy in terms of cell-based assays and to save them time in the lab. And we, uh, we believe one of our USPs is that we provide superior customer service and application support throughout the lifetime of all of our instruments. So yeah, at Nexalon, we specialize in cell counting, cell assays and image cytometry. We have a range of premium top quality cell counters. This is our solometer range. Um, on the left, we have the a picture of the spectrum there, which is the most versatile instrument within our solometer range. And this is what we'll be demonstrating shortly. But I also wanted to quickly mention Nexalon's two other instruments. The newest addition to Nexalon's family was launched last year. This is the Celica MX in the middle of your screen here. It's a high throughput version of our solometers. And by high throughput, I mean it will count 24 samples per run, and each sample will be counted and analyzed in less than seven seconds. And then we have our image cytometer, the Soligo on the right, which is a plate-based system and can do cell-based assays in multiple channels, creating really beautiful images. And this is Nexalom's full portfolio of instruments. We don't do anything else. We're pretty fanatical about cell counting and cell imaging and have really created the best instruments to do this to the highest accuracy. So to summarize what you can expect from your spectrum, you can expect accurate cell viability testing and counting and concentration measurements. You can also expect it to do simple cell-based assays. It will um, image in two colors of fluorescence per count, but you can image with up to five colors if you do them as separate counts. You only need 20 microliters of sample and you should get your results in less than two minutes. There's no fluidics within the system, so therefore there's no cleaning and there's no washing between samples. It's extremely low maintenance. And a little bit about the technology. The Spectrum 
imager cells within disposable imaging chambers, which I'll show you. It has high powered LED light source uh, with user changeable optical filters, allowing for flexibility with antibodies and staining methods for your cell based assays. And this is a list of our most popular fluorescent optic modules. And as you can see, these filters cover a large range of fluorophores and nucleic acids that can be used on the spectrum. All of Nexalom's solometer software range actually have this advanced cell membrane detection algorithm. What the algorithm does is it relies on the cells being focused uh, to have a dark crisp edge and a nice bright center. And because of this advanced algorithm, it doesn't matter if your cells are round or rod shaped or kind of sickle shaped like these, some of these here, or a mixture of those phenotypes all of the cells will be counted equally well. They don't have to be perfectly round. And that accurate uh, membrane outline algorithm means you will also get accurate declustering as well. So instead of estimating how many cells there are in a clump, the Solometer software will actually look at that membrane outline algorithm and accurately detect the number of cells within your chains and within your clumps of cells. And using the bright field imaging within combination with a fluorescent nuclear stain makes it even easier to do declustering. So that algorithm also means you can accurately determine the cell size within your population as well. So therefore, when you have a mixed population, you can add a size gating to determine the number of cells within each population. So here we have a mixed population of mature dendritic cells and some smaller PBMCs. There's a distinct size difference between those two cell types. You will get your histogram within your results um, to show you your size distribution of your cells. And when there's a distinct difference like this, you can use the gating software to determine the total number of PBMCs and the total number of the larger dendritic cells as well. So when it comes to viability, there are many methods for detecting live and dead cells, um, right from tripan blue to various different fluorescent reagents, all of which we can use on the spectrum. And we have a few examples of images here and the different dyes you can use. But by far one of the most accurate and easy and robust methods for assessing the viability of your cells is to use acridine orange and propridium iodide. So these two dyes come as a premix file and you simply mix them one-to-one -one with your cells. There's no incubation time and they're ready to image. How that works, the acridine orange is permeable to all cells. It binds to DNA and will fluoresce bright green. So if you were to use it on its own without propridium iodide, all of your nucleated cells would be green. However, when used in combination, uh, the propridium iodide only enters dead cells. It also binds to DNA. Um, and it quenches any acridine orange that's in there, so therefore producing a red color within your dead cells. So in combination, uh, you should have your live cells that are fluorescing green and your dead cells that are fluorescing red. And the best thing about it is no signal is generated from anything that's non-nucleated or any debris. So why should we use fluorescence instead of tripan blue for viability? Well, bright field can be pretty deceiving, um, especially with samples such as PBMCs and other primary samples. This is a separated PBMC sample here. Um, and from the bright field image, I hope you can see it contains many different cell types of different sizes and a lot of background within that image as well. It would be pretty difficult to count by eye or count using this bright field image alone to see how many PBMCs were in that sample. You will always get some sort of red blood cell contamination, even if it's very low and your separation processes are good, there will always be some red blood cells within those. However, if you use um, AOPI, so if you use the fluorescent dye to indicate your nucleated PBMCs, you will be able to see it's much easier to see exactly where these cells are and if they are live or if they're dead. So fluorescent viability tests are essential for many primary cells. And I have a few examples here showing that if you use a fluorescent nuclear stain, it doesn't matter if you have debris, 
or non-nucleated cells, or even messy media that's um, obscuring the bright field image, such as that tumor digest sample, um, you can still get perfect counts and see exactly where your nucleated cells are. Just a few technical points before I show you the live demonstration of the spectrum in terms of concentration. The spectrum will give you accurate results for uh, cells between 1 times 10 to the 5 and 1 times 10 to the 7 cells per mil. But if tested, you can also extend that range uh, beyond 1 times 10 to the 7, such, in, such as in sample 5 here. You can also perform population analysis. And you can do this within the software. This is an example of a test for PE transfection efficiency. Results are presented um, like this within the software. But what you can also do is you can seamlessly export that data into FCS Express to do further and more complex analysis. And this is something um, I will show you with some examples today. So finally, I wanted to mention that because of the high powered LEDs, it's not just viability measurements that the spectrum can be used for. Simple cell based assays such as cell cycle, apoptosis, surface marker staining and immunophenotyping can also be done. And on top of that, there's a choice of a five times or a ten times microscope lens within the spectrum. And this means that we can also count really small cell types such as yeast, platelets, algae and even bacteria. So my last slide is just to let you know that we have very recently just um, released a cell fitness panel, which is a combination of five fitness assays. So you get all the reagents for these five assays in there um, and they have been optimized for the spectrum. Um, so with that, I will now move on to our live demonstration of the spectrum. OK, so I hope you can now see my spectrum software up here. I apologize if it's a little bit small. Um, hopefully you can see it well. I'll try and zoom in on some of the images so you can see those a bit more clearly. So this is the software and this is the spectrum here. It comes with these disposable uh, plastic slides. They're very easy to use. And what I'm going to demonstrate today is just some fluorescent beads that I have here. These are polystyrene beads. Some of them are green and some of them are red. So it's going to mimic a um, viability assay using AOPI, but just with the beads instead. So to load a slide, you peel the protective film off both sides. And then you'll see that it has two counting chambers per slide. The uh, clear area here is where we're going to be counting. So all I'm going to do is mix my beads a little and pipette 20 microliters into one of these chambers. OK. So you only need 20 microliters of sample. And once you've pipetted it in, it should fill the chamber and then you can place the chamber in the salometer here. So I'll go to the software now, which is on a laptop that's connected. Um, what we have um, in the software is we have a number of plug and play assays that are, will already be loaded for you. So I've got an OQB assay here that's already loaded, but we also have a choice of lots of different assays as well here. So we've got cell cycle, transfection efficiencies, um, immunostaining, apoptosis, and we've got viability up there. And I'll show you some examples of all of those as well. But for now, we're using the bead assay and I'm going to preview my bright field image. So these are the beads, these are live. You'll hopefully see them move about if I wiggle the slide. Um, so this is a live image here. We have a focus dial on the edge, which you can turn to perfect that focus. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so we can see those a little bit better. Now, the beads don't look quite like cells. They don't have that crisp, dark edge and bright center because they are spherical beads. But we can still see that these are nicely in focus. I can then stop that preview and I can also preview in either of the fluorescent channels. The two I've got installed at the moment are a green filter and a red filter. So if I preview in F1, I should see the green image of those uh, beads. This would mimic looking at the live portion of your cells if you were doing viability. 
And you could also look at the red image as well. So you might hear the noise, it's just the changing of the filters, and then you can see your red image there. The exposures can be changed. You can make things brighter, you can make things dimmer, depending on how strong your staining is. It's particularly important when you're doing um, antibody staining to have that control. But once you're happy with the focus and the exposure, you can press count. So you'll hear um, the filters moving at the moment. So that's what the noise is in the background. Uh, what the spectrum is now doing is it's taking four areas of images. It's similar to counting the four corners of a hemocytometer, but it's actually a larger area than those four corners. So you'll be counting more cells than you would on a hemocytometer. So it's taking four different areas, it's taking an image in bright field, and then it's taking an image in the green channel and then in the red channel. It'll add all of those up at the end. You should see it counting them and then your results should pop up. So your results come up and look like this. This results page can be customized to look exactly how you want it to. This is the default setting. It will tell you and um, the assay type you've used. It will give you a date and time stamp up here. Um, it will also tell you the total number of beads, the total number of green and the total number of red, and it will give you a percentage. So if this was a viability assay, it will be live and dead and viability here. It also gives you concentrations and the diameter of those beads. Uh, within this bead um, sample, the red beads are larger than the green beads. So we can see that the red population is of a uh, higher diameter than the green. So I can close that and it doesn't just spit out a number and expect you to agree with it. You can close that down. You can look at your, uh, I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can see this a bit more clearly. We can look at those images and we can also move around so we can see them more clearly. We can also look at a combined image now of the red plus the green in a single sample as well. And we can turn on the counted mode which will draw a little red circle around all of your red beads or red cells and a green circle around all your green beads or your green cells. Declustering is very good. We can see that we've got two close together here at the top. Um, it declusters them very well. And we can see here that the red beads are definitely larger than the green ones. So uh, this is part of the process. You should be looking at images and you should be checking um, exactly what has been counted. There's a couple of other uh, things that I wanted to show you on this. You've got your size histograms, like I showed you in the presentation. So you can click on your histogram here, and this will show you your size distribution of your beads or of your cells. So it's showing us here that the green beads are definitely smaller than the red beads. This again can be customized to suit exactly uh, what you need it to suit. So if you wanted, for instance, if you wanted it to be a bit uh, more in depth with the amount of bins that we've got, we can change that to get uh, to make it look slightly different. Um, you can also add gates as well. And I'll show you that with one of our cell samples. There is another button here, the calculator button, which I really, really like, especially if you've got lots of people in the lab using the cell counter, looking at viability, and then having to seed a flask after they've counted. So what the calculator will do is it will take into account your live concentration that it's just measured. You can tell it your volume of sample that you have. So let's say you have five mils of your sample, and you can then give it a target number of cells or a target concentration. So let's say we wanted it at one times 10 to the six, um, and we have it at 1.7 times 10 to the 6. Um, if that is the case, it will tell you exactly how much diluent you need to add to your 5 mils to make a 1 times 10 to the 6 solution for your next seeding. Okay, so with that, I wanted to now show you an example of viability, an example of some of the simple cell-based assays we can do as well. I don't have any cells with me today, but I have some previous images that have been taken that I can show you. So I'm just going to remove that slide for now. And we're going to go to, uh, first we're going to look at a viability sample. So I'm going to choose my AOPI viability assay and I'm going to load some images. 
So we have a, some PBMCs that I will load up. So these are what the PBMCs look like, look very similar to the image I showed in the presentation. We can see that there are PBMCs here, but if we look closely enough, we can also see that this one here looks like it could be a red blood cell. So there are always some infiltrating red blood cells in there. It's very hard for any instrument in Brightfield to tell you which are red blood cells and which are PBMCs. Uh, if we count this sample, I'm just going to count the images that have already been done. What we will get is our total number of PBMCs and the total number of live, total number of dead, and then the viability as well. All your concentration information is here. And again, you've got your mean diameters as well. I'm going to close this so we can look at it a bit more clearly. And let's zoom in again on that. Look at a combined image so we can see the red and the green in one image. And again, look at the counted image, and we just need to make sure that every uh, every cell is counted within that image. If we look at the histogram for this one, we can see that the size distribution looks a bit different, but um, we can definitely see we've got nice normal PBMCs in there. The other thing you can do at this point is if you uh, think, for instance, your PBMCs anything above um, let's say 12 microns isn't a PBMC, it can't be. So what we'll do is we'll put a gate on, we'll say anything above 12 isn't, so I'm gonna put my maximum size to 12 there, add the new gate, and you will, within that gate, get a new concentration and a new number of live cells within that. You can also clear those um, and go back to your original. Okay, so that's viability. And the next one I really wanted to show you um, was something a, bit, a little more um, complicated. It needs a little bit more sensitivity. And we have really high powered LEDs in there that can look at immunostaining with antibodies. So we've got a, um, a CD3 assay here. Um, so um, within this assay, we've got some immune cells and we're looking for the T cell population. So they have stained with a PE CD3 antibody. I'm going to load that image up now. And what they want to know is the total number of T cells within their population. So they have very nice looking purified immune cells here, much nicer looking than the PBMCs. And then what we also have is the PE staining on top of that as well to indicate that it's a T cell and not a B cell or a different um, kind of immune cell. So using our template for our CD3 PE assay, we can count those. Now, this is slightly different. Um, in the results, it will give you your total number of cells here. But what we can do is we can export this data into FCS Express. It's going to give us much more control over where we put our gates um, and over how many uh, and over our data, basically. So I'm just going to export into FCS Express. And hopefully this should automatically open. If it doesn't, what I'll do is I will, oh, it has automatically opened, great. Um, so here we go, this is FCS Express. We have a template for any kind of assay that's similar to this. And what we can do here is it will count your total number of cells and assess them for PE intensity. And we can see we've got two really nice distinct populations here. One of CD3 PE plus population here, and a P negative population, so a non T cell population over here. Depending on the intensity of your staining, you might want to move these parameters, but also depending on if you have negative controls as well, you might want to move these gates depending on positive and negative controls. And you get all of your information over here. So you get your total number and concentration of cells, you get your concentration that's CD3 PE positive and the negative population as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna, while I've got a few minutes left, I'm just gonna show you one more 
which is a cell cycle, uh, just something a little bit different. So this experiment was to, it was fixing some cells, lysing and fixing, and then staining with propridium iodide to look at the total amount of DNA in there. The more amount of DNA, um, the higher intensity the staining will be, and the further along the cell cycle it will also be. So let's open one of those images. So we've got the red staining of your cells here. We'll do a quick count on those. And again, export into FCS Express. And we'll check if that automatically pops up. There we go. So this one's a little bit different. I'm gonna put this in the full screen. So we've got a population analysis here, size versus fluorescent intensity. You can move that circle around. If you think you might have some outliers, you can exclude them. But then we also have over here, um, all of our cells assessed for their fluorescent PI intensity. And we can see here that these are just untreated cells and they form a really nice normal um, cell cycle histogram. We can also put markers on those as well to show you the percentage in each of those um, cell cycle phases. So we've got sub G1, G0 to G1, S phase, and G2 to mitosis um, phase here, all your percentages, all of your um, concentrations as well. So I'm just looking at the time and um, allowing for some questions, I will stop there and pass it back to Scott to see if we have any questions. Sure. Thank you, Suzanne. That was uh, very interesting and very informative. Yes, we have a few questions uh, coming in. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, you said the spectrum was really simple and easy to to. Uh, or you said you had this the spectrum had multiple optic modules how how easy or is it how easy is it to switch between these optical modules yeah good question it's really easy so if you're doing lot if you've got a multi-user lab with you doing lots of different experiments you might sometimes want to have a blue module in you might sometimes want to have a far red you might want to have the pe one in for instance so I, actually i can probably show you so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to turn the spectrum round the modules are in the back here and it's very simple you can undo the black here and they are very simply a clip in and clip out modules so you can change those um very very easily and uh, yeah all i would do is clip this one out and clip it back in again and then you're ready to go with your new module perfect thank you uh, I think this one kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, you showed some uh, basic immunophenotyping experiments uh, in your demo. Uh, what if you wanted to stain more than two markers? How would you do that? Yes, um, so you can only image two at a time. Um, so say if you're doing four different markers, um, you can have them all stained within the same sample, within the same slide. So you can pipette your 20 microliters into here and you can scan using your first two filters for your first time and then just simply swap them for your next two and scan again and um, you can do some fancy work in overlaying those images to actually get um, four channels four fluorescent channels if you're doing uh, really um, more advanced immunophenotyping okay thank you very interesting uh, another question uh, how do you distinguish between syncytia versus normal clumping of pbmc's and HIV infected in vitro cell cultures? Yeah, that's a that's an excellent question and something that we do on our image cytometer, the Saligo actually, we do that quite um, often. If you were doing it in this, um, the synthetia is a fusion of, um, of nuclei. Um, you would have to, we have very detailed size information on, um, on all of our assays here. So if you have um, just clumping of cells together, you will normally still be able to see those membranes between those um, and decluster as I showed in some of those images. However, if you've got the syncytia where you've got a fusion of multiple, um, it won't decluster those. It will cap because you won't be able to really see any sort of membrane between them. So it will count it all as one. Now, if you don't want it to count it all as one, there are ways of analysing how many 
synthetica you have within your sample by using those size gates. So we can gate out all the small ones, all the single cells, and just look at those larger ones. And we can work out based on size roughly how many are in those synthetica as well. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, a couple more. I I guess, uh, how does it compare to using a flow cytometer? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yes, so using a flow, cyto a flow cytometer is obviously very, very sensitive and it normally has lots and lots of options in terms of channels as well. And ours is slightly more limited than that. But um, it does compare very well with these um, fluorescent assays, with the immunophenotyping kind of assays. We've done a lot of comparisons with flow cytometry and got very similar results. And this can just be put on your bench top and used. You don't have to. If you're working in an environment where you have to book a flow cytometer, um, you maybe have to pay to book that flow cytometer. And it takes a long time um, to actually count something on a flow cytometer as well. You've also got to think about the cleaning and the clogging um, and the expense of using a flow cytometer, whereas this is uh, much, much cheaper. But you might not have as many options in terms of um, the fluorescent antibodies that you can use. Perfect. Uh, uh, I'm going to sneak in one more question. It's a small one. Uh, what are the cell size limitations for detection? Uh, cell size. OK, yes. Um, so we actually have three different thicknesses of slides. Um, so if you're doing large cells such as adipocytes, which can be up to around 200 microns, we have slides that can accommodate that. Um, so I'd say up to 200 microns. Um, and on the small side, we've actually imaged bacteria that's um, right down to one micron. So we have quite a, li a large um, size range that you can use as well. Perfect. Okay. Uh, thank you again, Suzanne, for answering all the questions. Uh, I would like to thank all the uh, attendees uh, for coming along. If you have any further questions, please uh, feel free to email myself or Suzanne and we can follow it up. Uh, as I said, uh, you will receive uh, a recording of uh, the presentation in the next couple of days. Please feel free to send that out to your colleagues. Uh, and also, just out of interest for you guys, we, we have another session at 12 noon GMT time uh, this afternoon. So if you wish to attend that again and see uh, Suzanne repeating the whole process, please feel free, but also uh, invite some of your colleagues as well. Uh, and uh, I would like to finish the, uh, the seminar there. Thank you again and take care, stay safe, stay positive and COVID negative.